Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here, welcoming you all to another episode of Sharks TV's podcast. Uh, Coach's Corner, joined as always by Martin Grubb. Martin, how are you doing? Still on the half, Andy, if you want to know the truth. Um... <laughs> well, you were, a bit, you were a bit angry at the end of Saturday's game. I'm, I'm kind of hoping things have calmed down a bit, but um, you're a professional sportsman, you're used to winning. It's uh, tough to take, isn't it? It's, it's different, right? It's different, obviously. It's a massive weekend for us, and, and it just it never went how we, we wanted. And um, it's tough to take. I think this this club has been built on success, and and it'll continue to be built on success. But um, when you play, don't get the immediate success, which making the playoffs would have been a, a, a small step forward that way for us this year. Um, when you don't get that, it is, it's difficult. You you kind of start thinking a lot and then you go through a range of emotions and and then you go enough and you say, I don't want to be at home for the next four weeks. Please don't take that the wrong way, Katie and the kids. But um you know, we've never been we've never been done this early and it's tough to take, but ultimately, as you say, we're professionals, we we move forward and we look forward and we pick the bones out of things and try and make it better. Yeah, I I kind of understand what you're saying because um, even just now with a cup final this week, I've watching social media has been rubbish this week. I just didn't want to watch it and everybody else so excited about the future, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's even practice, you know, obviously we, we've still got to practice. We've still got to try and go out in a high here. We, we Obviously two games coming up to, to finish our season and we want, as professionals, we wanted to finish the best we can. We want to do it for our fans and and in the club itself, but it's still been really strange because you know, as players, how much are they wanting to take in and break down what happened before because they know that it's kind of dead rubbers. And so it's a different it's a different situation, as you say. You look at social media, you look at um MK and Hull going into that cup final and you probably had a little bit more of an excited eye on these games when we were still in contention. But it's been uh, yeah, it's been difficult and I suppose as we say for a club like us, we haven't been used to it and, and, and we've been fortunate that we have been able to win and we've never really felt like this for a number of years now. So um, it takes some getting used to, but you also got to use it to fuel, like fuel the flames. Um, I said that to the players on, on sun, Saturday and Sunday, like you, know, you you have to remember how this feels and, and use that because you don't want to be in that position again if, if you can help it, so... How do the players feel just now? Gutted, you know, deflated, frustrated, angry, like there's a range of emotions. Um, there's still an element of pride in there for all of us because, I mean, I know we came in and we were making kind of big noises, and but let's be honest, right, it's a really good hockey league and, and a lot of good teams and to be there as a first-year team right at the very end or, or a weekend to go... Um, there is an element of pride that, you know, as we've done, I think, better than any first-year team and, and the stats surrounding it. It's not something that I'm massively concerned with, but it's, there is, a, as I say, there is a, lot, a lot of good things, but as players, they want to be in the playoffs. So as we do as, as staff and as everybody else does as fans, so there is still a lot of, yeah, a lot of, Probably unanswered questions in their head at this stage, and and then of course you, you I guess you can't forget as players they've got to go and play two more, and then they've got to you know, like everybody else in the league and or pro sport you start looking at what happens next. As a club, we have to look at the same thing, so it's it's probably a strange time for them, but they are also very proud people and, and proud to, to play for this club. So I know that you know this weekend they'll go out and they'll give everything they can because that's what they want to do and that's what we all want to do is try and finish as as best as we can with the most points that we can and, and try and obviously send their own loyal fans home with a smile on their face. Well we'll look at the entire league in a, a minute in our in our season but we're not going to avoid the uh, the games at the, the weekend but it's just as you were, you were saying that it reminds me of what um, the goalkeepers Curtis Callum and Logan have said to me this year when they lose a goal Got to have the memory of a goldfish. You got to put it behind you and and get on. But there is a bit of learning from these games. Um, 
if we go back to the to the first game against Telford and a fantastic first period and after the game you were the words you used were disgusted. Um I'm not gonna go too much in into that, but I wanted to ask you the question were we perhaps a little bit um guilty of what we've argued that other teams have done and that we focus really a lot on ourselves and what went wrong for us rather than perhaps on Telford and how they really stepped up because some of their fans on social media were saying that's the best they've played all season. Is it fair to just criticise ourselves or is there a bit of credit there for Telford? I mean, there's always credit for Telford, I think. They're a good team. You know, as I said, I think I said after the game, I've known Tommy um, most of my life. Um, We've played against each other, we've, we've worked together, we've coached against each other and... Every team Tom Watkins puts together is a good hockey team. And sometimes they maybe don't get the the kind of results that, that, that Tom would like, um, like a lot of teams. And, you know, this year they've been hit by injuries and suspensions at times. But I think the one thing, and I think Scotty said it in his interview, um, you know, again, it's a, a guy I've got a lot of respect for, Scott, and um, coached him as a, as a young player. And I um, actually played with Scott when he was coming through in, in Fife and I was kind of, finishing my career, but he was right where they had, they could play free. I think they realised that they started slow. Um, but if I'm honest, when you say a, a good first period, for me, and I told the players this at the end of first, it was only a good first 10 minutes. Because after that 10 minutes, and we went, the, the third goal went in, um, probably the worst thing that happened to us, because, you know, I thought Matty Blair played well, but he made one mistake in that one. The other two goals he could do nothing about, but he made a mistake on Struan's goal. Um, and I think our whole bench, because it was pretty much three shots, three goals at that stage, they um, they thought, well, well, it's a backup goalie and this is going to be easy. Telford have taken the night off. And and I, and I said to them at the end of the first, you know, we, cr- we we gave up way too many chances near the end of the first period. They were they, they, were, they, were, shots they were in the coming, first period. Yeah, they were coming in there. They were on the ascendancy, and it was about standards for us, like with the manager game and and continue to press and play and go forward and. But be responsible was the word they used. Like you've got to be responsible in all three zones. And um, you know, credit to them, as you say, they 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 stepped up for sure. They played with a lot of freedom. They played with a lot of pride um, because they didn't want their goalie to get lit up. And we then just started to really get away from the structure and the system and and everything that's that's made us successful in the games we played well and. Then there comes a stage where you start getting a little bit desperate and you start leaving holes left, right and centre. I was going to ask, did, did panic and, set in? And, you know, like as much as we kept we kept trying to, to keep them focused and calm and, and, and basically, yeah, say there's no panic on the bench, it, it's tough because when you know, a player crosses a white line, it's, it's their thoughts, it's their decision-making and a snap judgment and... It's not to have a go at any any player or, or the team, but we made a lot of mistakes. And we then the more mistakes we made, we dug ourselves deeper into a hole that we couldn't get out of. And, and some of the goals we considered were criminal, but it's, um, I say it's still not a takeaway for a, a team like Telford to when they smelt a little bit of blood, then they punished us. And it's probably the most disappointing, well, I don't think it's probably, it is the most disappointing game we've, we've played the whole season. I mean, it was one of the ones that mattered the most. And, um, that one, you know, watch some of the video back, and it's, it's one of the toughest ones to try and break down because there is a lot of flaws in our game. But as you say, it's a learning experience. It's not only just for the league, but for these games and, and for players. And we've got now to sift through the wreckage and make ourselves better. It's only a learning experience if people learn from it, though, isn't it? I mean, it's a, it was a tough lesson to take, but you've much as difficult to watch that game back, players have probably got to watch it back, haven't they? Hundred percent. Like they, they obviously get the, they get the end start, which sends them the shifts, and and they can then watch kind of the goals and the highlights and stuff. And I mean, the one thing I will say is, hundred percent, they have to learn. Everybody does, from coaching staff, right down to to every single player. Um, but the one thing I will say is that they didn't go out there to do that on purpose. They didn't go out to stop trying or to lose a hockey game. And I think, you know, I, I'm a fan of a sport, of sports teams myself and, and it's not a criticism of any fan or anybody, but every team does it and every fan does it. But there's just, there is a, 
was a massive overreaction at times of you know, how bad we were. And, and yes, we were. We won't hide from it. I'll never hide for that. I, I never had for it on Saturday. We weren't very good. <laughs> but that's why I was kind of asking right at the start, did we focus way too much on ourselves and that we were poor and ignore the fact that Telford really stepped up. They were yeah, they, a different they did. class in the second and third. They did, but I think we all know as, as whether it be Sharps fans or fans of other sports teams, that's what you do, right? You look at your own team because you know the standards they set. And you've got control. And uh, Yeah, and, and your disappointment and your hurt is because your team, whether you're on the team or in the stands, like that's, that's your disappointment because you know that that, that team, the team that you love and team that you're part of, never produced what they can. And it was a it was a, a bit of a conversation that we had. It was, you know, we have we have set our own standards, we have our own culture here, you know, we have our own way of playing and and in one of the biggest games of the season we just never hit the heights that we yeah. needed to. But yes, I mean the the players were as disappointed as anybody and, and I think that they will learn. I know they want to learn. I know that no, we, we, we spoke at depth about it. We spoke about it before we played on the Sunday. The bounce back, I thought, you know, obviously results disappointment. I thought the bounce back was good. Um, and, we yeah, we just need to keep well, moving sun- forward. The Sunday game from the, the stream looked a really, two really nervous teams. Uh, both teams trying hard not to lose. It felt like watching it from my perspective, but it's difficult because you're watching on a on a stream. Um it probably could have went either way. It looked like penalties were probably the deciding factor in it. Yeah, if I'm honest, I thought we played pretty well. Um, it might sound daft because we've well, we've lost the game, but um, the the biggest issue, and it would have been the same if they lost the game and, and, and so many other games, in the tight games, a mistake or two is, from us has cost us. And, and you know, the, the penalties don't help for sure, but there's the recognition of 29 or 39 seconds to go that first period. You have to get in there zero zero. You have to. And we turn the puck over. And then they get some zone time. We spoke about Balash and Gabay. And as soon as one's got it, you kind of got to cut the supply off to the other. Balash has it. We lose. We completely lose where Gabay is. Next thing it's in our net. You, you can't do that. Um, then, then we come back into it, you know, we get ourselves in, in a decent spot. I thought once we got back to 3-3 three, three, that, if I'm honest, at that stage, I thought there was only one team going to win it. We were looking good. And I thought that would have been us, see. And obviously, we, the more we pushed, because we, we wanted and, and kind of needed, but I, I know it wouldn't have been the end if we won it in overtime, but we wanted the regulation win um, for, for obvious reasons, uh, the result and the points in the head-to-head situation. But we pushed a wee bit, then we got caught on the, the, I think it was this Liam Morris's goal, whatever that was, second or third. Um, he was aggressive on the blue line and we got caught a bit soft there. We turned the puck over and for the, that must have been the second, the third one, we had it in one corner. We could have been a bit better on the wall. It went east-west. Ends up in our net with a shot there. Um, I say we get the character to get back to 3-3 to three, three, and then that was, the, that was the penalty, the power play that undone us there, which... Really, really frustrated me because the week before in Telford, we killed a few penalties, killed quite a few, but we're 100% on that PK. And our PK, yes, everybody can go back to the beginning. We started really slow. Our PK was horrible back then. And then over the, the last wee while, it's, it's had its moments. But I'd, I would probably quite like to see the percentage from maybe Christmas onwards. I think it would be top half of the, the PK percentage. But um, when, we needed our, when we needed it most, we were just fell up, fell short, and again, you can't take the credit away for the other teams. Like Balash and Gabay has got a couple of chances and they buried them. Um, I think it was Mog, Stuart Mog, and, and Baird, and a couple of blocks, a couple of somebody blocks were, you know, you just got to give them credit. There was one I remember, like Dunny had undressed everybody, thought he was going to stick it in the empty net, and out of nowhere, yeah. Stuart Mugg comes and plays goalie and Dunny done nothing wrong there. <laughs> but you got to, sometimes you've got to give them credit. Both teams were desperate. Um, and I would have been dis- more disappointed. Of course we're all disappointed, but I would have been more disappointed if, if we'd played bad yeah. and kind of felt a bits for the second night in a row. And But 
they showed character. They showed some heart. They bounced back. They 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 got involved. Um, you know, everybody played their bit. Played their part in that game. We were a couple of guys short, but that's irrelevant if I'm honest. It's um, it was more about bouncing back, giving ourselves a chance. Going into that last five minutes, we had a chance, and then we I mean, even when we got the goalie off, I know they had ice the puck a couple of times, but they never got out of their zone. We we had all the possession. We we looked comfortable. It was just trying to get that that chance and you've got to give the bees credit because they've in a smaller rink they swarmed that that kind of house as we call it the, the slot area that you could there's nothing to get through yeah. and we had a couple of shots missed in there and maybe needed a little bit of puck luck which would have been a great help for us but it was a disappointing end to when you really do sit back I'm probably not ready quite yet but when you sit back and look at it it's you know, it's not been a bad, uh, we're not going to sit here and say it's been great, but it's not been a bad first season for a debut team, but it's a disappointing end and it's a really, really long road trip when you know that really that's your season over. Um, and the players felt that as much as I did, so, you know, congratulations to the Bees and everybody else that's in the playoffs, but the next few weeks will not be the same because we all wanted to be trying to find a way to get to Coventry and let all our fans experience that part. I think the... The other thing is that all the away fans have been so um, complimentary about the Sharks organisation, yourself, the players, the fans, the owners. It's been a good season and they'll miss a little bit with us not being there. You know, it's not quite no boy, no party, but um, the Shelby Sharks have a good record um, at Coventry and I've had a reasonably good season, but... This has been a tough season for, for us. I know it's been tough for, for you, Pitt. And I mean, there's some folk have not made it through the season in general. You know, we've lost, obviously, Adam Johnson and, and Kino as, mm. as, as well. And these things are much more important. But to come away with um, no post-season as such, it's, it's, a, it's a tough gig. But let's go right back to the start because we weren't even sure we were going to be in this, this league. You were preparing... This time, well, maybe a month or so on, you were preparing perhaps for another season in NIHL 1, weren't we? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the the kind of late, I say lateness, but it was a kind of rush job, if you want to call it that. I mean, obviously John's been on a few podcasts and, and kind of documented how that happened. Absolutely. But, I mean, ultimately, yeah, and, and I mean, obviously you mentioned, you know, it was he was in Nottingham at the, the league playoffs as he would be with his job that got Peaks' number. I speak to Peaks, then I speak to John. And and, and as John's as he very well documented, it was a, a, almost a courtesy a courtesy meeting um, but it from, was from a phone call. And then, and, you, it was, and then you're left trying to pull together teams, Yeah, imports. but even, even, when, even when, obviously, the, as, as an ownership, even when, when, they, when they made the decision that Yes, we're going to come into the to the, the Sharps family, if you like, the, the fold here. It was that still took a little bit of time. Then obviously you've got to deal with the lead, uh, the league, and then by the time you get the nod, I, mean, I use Liam Danskin as an example. Danko had, was announced, I think, at seven a.m. was signing for Hull, and noon they announced us in the league. Now, if if he's went somewhere for a successful team like us. It meant that the majority of guys were already committed to teams. Yeah. And then on the flip side, and you know, I wouldn't change it, but I I felt, and I think it was still the right thing to do, that we had to be loyal to the group that had got us to the National League. Oh, 100%. Um, and give them the chance to step up and show what they can do. And obviously the, the kind of grand slam and, and the success we'd had. But still never gave them loads of time. I mean, obviously, once you get in the summer mode for a player for a few weeks and you take some downtime and you go on your holidays and you maybe overeat a wee bit and consume some beverages, then you get told, all right, I'm not preparing for an NHL one season. I'm preparing for a National League season. You've got to kind of get, get it together a wee bit quicker and mentally that changes them. So is it, did it help us? Of course it never, but... I start again, I wouldn't have changed no. it and I wouldn't have used it as an excuse because I think the hockey has been to a really high standard. And, and it has. I think, like you say, everybody else 
in the league has, has been complimentary towards us as, as an organisation, which, you know, I think we've got that, that part we've got to be really proud of because we came in with a good name. The club as it was from winning in Coventry, winning in, in Altrincham, winning our own leagues, but behind the scenes as well, the people that work behind the scenes, and obviously you've been in that in the boardroom when it, when it was National League yep. one, and and seeing that there's still a lot of work by a lot of volunteers. I think that was a key at that stage. A lot of volunteers, myself, you know, the players, we created a reputation for ourselves, and we could have damaged it this year. We could have went in this National League and and fell flat on our face, but I think we've enhanced it and and we've made the league better. We've made teams take sit up and take a bit of note. But I, when you when you're as competitive as I am, I blame my dad for that. But um, you still sit here and go, I'm not ready to be finished playing this weekend. Oh. We still see the playoffs were the kind the the target as a minimum. But we have to realise that we had we couldn't come in with entitlement. We had no real right to come in and win like we had before. We could have, let's be honest, Andy, right? It sounds really disrespectful to other teams and, and it's not intended that way. And anybody that knows me will know it's, it's not intended that way. But some nights we could have gave teams a 10-goal start in here and we would have won. Our playoff semi-final last year, I think we beat Solihull 12-1 in or, or a, or a semi-final. So... Our mentality had to change, and and then some nights it was great, and other nights it wasn't so great, and we got found out. But this national league is a real hockey league, and no, I, th I think you're I think you're right about the league. I'm, what I'm trying to paint here is the the chronology of where we've came from. I get that we wanted to win. Now, also, bear in mind there were teams in the the league that were looking at the geography more than they were looking at the the Sharks organisation and such, and thinking, nah, I don't I don't fancy it. I didn't fancy it at all. There were players posting on social media of nobody's asked the players about how far it is from Milton Keynes to Dumfries, and I didn't fancy it. But I'll tell you what, 150 Milton Keynes fans loved it for the weekend that they were up here, and I think so did the Milton Keynes um, team as well. We had some great times. John's already said in previous podcasts with me, we took the fixtures because we were the new boys, and they weren't particularly kind to us in some in some ways. We're particularly kind to the fans. Um and at the end of this podcast we'll be asking you know to say what you think of the fans for the season. But the fans have spent thousands of pounds following the Sharks this season. But we overcame that geography element of things. We travel more than anybody else and we've never ever used that as an excuse. And we started that league slow. And you're talking about the penalty kill. We're sitting sixth overall in the league now for penalty kill. After those first 10 games, we would be sitting, I'm not sure, but oh, I guess dead. we would be we're sitting dead bottom. last. Yeah, we were dead last. Because we were talking about teams gelling and getting to know each other. We had folk travelling all over the world and teams just get. And we were having the same conversations, talking about trusting, trusting the process. And then we progressed all the way through that and started to find our feet, made a few changes. And the hockey's always been brilliant. And I, I, Ross's podcast with, with Nicky from 4000 Encounter, I watched that this morning. Great podcast. If you've not watched it, go and watch Nicky and that. Really interesting. But he was talking about, you know, the the bus legs and all the sorts of stuff that were, were going on, how difficult it, it was for us. But we started to find our feet. And then over Christmas, it was great. But we also lost ice time to the World Championships, which you were involved with. And then we lost ice time to the Trophy de Corse and the Curling at crucial times of the season, which is great for the facility. Absolutely fantastic for our facility, and that's you know that's why we've got such a good facility, because there's been investment in it. We also lost players over that time because they were involved, you know, Struan was involved, lost our team captain because he was doing things like that. And it was a tough time of the season for us. And then there was all sorts of other stuff going on. I mean, you, you said to me after the World Championship game, the final game against Korea, that that was probably the, the harshest the worst you felt for a team. Now I'm going to ask you, the weekend there or World Championships, which which has been the hard, the hardest? Because none of them were fun, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, they definitely were not fun. Um, I think they're, they're totally different, if I'm honest, because yeah. one, one obviously it's a national team playing for a, a win or bus gold medal um, and they're younger players and that still sticks with me as very difficult 
was very difficult as a, as a coach and um, to watch the young guys go through the range of emotions. But then when you're with a team for 56 games and every single week and on the bus for the many hours we've been on the bus and in hotels um, and you deal with the, the ups and downs and the adversity that comes your way, then it's difficult to see your team miss out like that and, and kind of take it on. Everybody took it on themselves. and So they were both very difficult. Um, I guess with the national team, you get to then kind of go away and go back to your team and have some fun and win some games, lose some games and almost try and forget about it. So the players um, can get over that a little bit quicker. Now for us, the, the biggest difficulty for me now is it's a whole summer now. And it probably, some guys will forget about it. Some guys will be goldfish about that situation. When you're the head coach of your team, then it's tough to get out of your head as much as you try. Because um, then it'll just take, it'll, it'll take up a big part of the, the kind of overall evaluation. Um, and then you obviously add into the mix that, how will this team look next year? We already know that Ross is, is retiring. Um, well, I'm not going. I'm not going to sit here and lie. This team will look different than it is now. Um, How different? That's the that's the big question, right? That's that whole you can't you can't just do the same things and expect different results. That whole definition of insanity yep. scenario. So, um, you know, as a as a club, as a as a management group, as coaching staff, as ownership, we we will sit down. Properly, we will look at everything that goes into this, you know, whether it be budget for playing budget, housing, um, season ticket revenue coming in, uh, you know, shirt sales. Everything that goes into us being able to put the best possible team on the ice, we'll look at every single every single element of that. We'll also look at now we have a full pre-season or full off-season, we'll look at player availability um, from our own team, from within the, the league, um, from outside this league um, obviously you, you look at maybe some guys don't want to come back maybe some guys do maybe other guys become available you never knew well I was going to say Martin when we talked about how positive the Sharks have been to the league and how good that I mean I'm going to give Showbiz a bit of a uh, a credit here all the social media stuff and all the rest of it right? and I know that created a lot of hype at the start but it also created a huge amount of excitement and everybody's seen it. And you just feel that the Sharks are now perhaps a club that people were looking at thinking, I want to be part of that. Because not every club's doing social media stuff. like we, I mean, we've nearly 1,200 subscriptions for Sharks TV and I know that other players from other teams watch it and they're looking at it thinking, they know you. You know, you're a good coach. You know, you're an international coach. They see the team. They see the direction. I think there'll be a lot of people putting their CV across your your, your desk or Craig's desk, giving it, I want to be a part of the Sharks. And it's going to be... You're going to have a headache this summer, aren't you? Hopefully. Um, yeah, I, I, we've not really turned too much of our attention to that. I mean, the truth be I'm told... Early. Yeah, the truth be... And the players will tell you this. Truth be told, we had we had meetings with players in the last couple of weeks and we're honest with them and said, listen, we ain't even going to talk about next season because all our focus was on trying to make the playoffs. And I think when we announced Liam, um, we kind of said that would kind of be the last at that stage yeah. until we knew where we were. Um and it was not out of disrespect again to kind of fans want info and, and I guess players want info as well, but it was more about, yeah, like firstly, our, our task was to try and make these playoffs. Now our task is to look at who fits in this club. And I guess every coach sits there, but you know, I genuinely sit here and I've said to, to, to players, potential players, players we've maybe turned down, players that went elsewhere, playing for us is not for everybody. You have to be a certain type of person. Like we've always said people first. So first and foremost, we need to bring the right people in here that fit straight into this community, into this club, into the, the interaction within our changing room, within our, our ownership group, within our fan base, obviously, is massively important. Buying into the process of, as soon as you sign up as a junior shark, you're part of the whole group and the seniors have to, to be the pinnacle of that. So 
we need to make sure when we're doing our, our due diligence that firstly we get the right people and hopefully there is an influx of guys I think you're right like we're we're a, a serious club in this league already that people will hopefully want to play here but we have to make sure we get the right people first with the right mindset that are going to enhance this group and obviously then their hockey ability will, will speak for itself uh, it reminds me of a phrase my granny used to say if you don't know where you're going any bus will take you there and it's very much a case of you have to have that vision and that outlook of the, the Sharks and you've always said that um, you know and it's the players that are here we were just talking about Liam doing the stuff with the kids and all the rest of it and you'll see Ross talking about his coaching and, and all the rest but how many players out there get involved with the kids to learn to play and all that sort of stuff so it's it's having that vision and people signing up to that 100% eh? Yeah I mean I think that there's no such thing as halfway, right? You're either in or you're out. And when you come here, you have to be in. You have to buy in. Like as you said earlier, we, we talked about trust in the process and mm -hmm. and asking the fans for some patience. The players are the same. And and if you don't want to buy into our philosophy and, and, and our culture, then yeah, ultimately this is not the club for you. And as I say, every club will will have the same, you know, whether it be you know, Leeds, Telford, Milton Keynes, the Bees, wherever. Everybody will have their own vision, their own culture, their own philosophies, their own identity of what they need, what they want, who's available, their own budgets. But we have to now have that tunnel vision and say, right, what is best for Solway Sharks? Who is the best people out there, players out there for us? Um, can we get them? Do they want to come? Do we have the budget? Um because let's not forget this is a business and it still has to stack up so I can't sit here and play fantasy hockey and just start picking guys left right and centre that um, I see that's the that difference don't between, fit that's the difference between you and all the fans on social media I, I have great fun managing the club with no accountability whatsoever from behind my keyboard saying we should be signing so and 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 so but it's not like that is it well, do you know in truth uh, and, and this is where the, the three owners deserve huge credit because in truth, we all play it. We all sit there, and, and they're, they're three businessmen and, and human beings that are desperate for us to succeed and say, right, you know, can we get this guy? Can we get this? Can we do this? And there is a bit of fantasy and, and fantasy hockey involved in that, but yeah, and yeah, ultimately, we, we then strip it back and say, right, let's kind of get ah, off our right, computers and, eye, and start looking at what works, what works for us, what works for our, yeah, for our philosophy, what what can this particular player wear? You know, like most coaches, you you kind of build a ghost roster, and you know it's kind of what what do you need? You need a, a round peg and a round hole. Because if you don't, as we all know, it, it doesn't work. So it's finding a kind of ghost roster. Of what what do we need as a group? And who are they potential players from either our current group or do what do we need to change? Because for me, the be all and end all is this team every single year, no matter how it looks, has to be one that our fans can be proud of. And that's the, the, the kind of be all and end all. And if you get that, I know I've got good people. I know I've got good players. I know I've kind of got a happy fan base, a happy dressing room. It gives us a far greater chance of success. And that's, that's the job now of, right, let's see where we can go. Let's see what we can do. Let's, I think... Uh, Let's just continue to, to take steps forward, whether it be small ones or whether we can take a giant leap somewhere in certain areas. Let's continue to move forward. Let's continue to stay positive. Let's continue to remember the, the things that have worked well. Let's continue to change and push the boundaries of the things that maybe haven't worked so well and and trust our own process. Like We now have to listen to what we've been preaching all year and, and trust what we've been doing because there's definitely a lot of elements that work change the ones that don't and well, we'll be back. I'm really interested to, to know that you guys are playing fantasy hockey by, behind the scenes. That means I'm going to put my, I'll be putting my fantasy hockey team towards Martin later on and he'll probably run me out of town with my, yeah. my, maybe, my suggestions. Maybe, hey, maybe it's a thing that we can get going on a weekly basis next year and our fans <laughs> can all play some fantasy hockey within the league. But hey, listen, everybody does it, Andy. Everybody does it. Players do it. You know, they'd love to have certain teammates potentially. 
you know, coaches, owners, like I think people that say they don't are telling you lies, but that's uh, uh, you know, <laughs> ultimately it never really pans out the way your bit of paper does, and you've got to do the the best with what what you have and and improve players and and still I still think you also have to remember, and we are one of the clubs that do do it, and we're not the only ones. There's a lot of clubs, but you still also got to look at what's underneath. What's coming uh, through your junior program? What's was your pathway look like for the day you start step on the ice and Dumfries High School to well, get into the seniors? So, is there any thoughts of? I'm mean, gonna ask you this right at the start of the season about a kind of a junior sharks team playing in the the SNL. Has there been any movement in in that at all? Well, I think there's. I've not really been privy to too much of that. Jamie and I have spoke a little bit. Um, and I still think somewhere down the line it's definitely needed. I think also. It's just that bit beneath uh, that you're we, talking we've about. We've got to be mindful of establishing ourselves as a fully fledged national league team. That I think that takes some of the resources away from the national team. That, well, that I guess that's the fear, or that's the bit that everybody's got to work out. And I think also when you look at the SNL, and you know it deserves the teams and, and the the owners uh, or the organisations deserve massive credit because that that league is getting it's, better. It's great. Um, it's getting better. There's really good players in that league. There's good coaches. It's competitive. So the last thing you also want to do is put a team in where people are not committed to it or they kind of want to play home games only. And that league's a genuine league now. So if you're going to go into it, it has to be, we have to be a benefit to the league as much as the league helps us. Um, right now, obviously, we have a little bit of a, a partnership with, with Joe and, and Widness. Witness. Um, that works for us. There's been a couple of other coaches in, in the North One that's spoke to me recently about maybe setting something up with, with more than one team. There's um, some links to the Caps as well. Um, we've got it? links with Stephen and uh, Stephen Lynch and, and his team in the Caps. So, you know, I think as long as we have ways to help our our talented young players get some senior experience, that makes sense. that's a starting point. Would it? Would I rather it was here? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. We'd rather somewhere down the line we are managing it ourselves. They're playing in SNL or NHL one or whatever it, the structure of hockey suits. I would rather have our own coaching staff and you know that kind of sharks style of play and philosophy happening here. Probably, probably too soon for next year, but it's definitely something that we all from top to bottom of senior ownership to the junior club and, and Leanne and her committee there, myself and, and all the coaches within the whole programme, um, the the rink itself you know, and, and the ice ball itself. And can't, if we can do it, I think we have to. Like, so it's aspirational. It's a no-brainer. It's, it's a no-brainer, but I'm not sure. Like I, I might sit here in four months' time and tell you that, oh, I, I, it happened very quickly. But... I think at this stage, it's definitely a, it's a hot topic of discussion and, and definitely aspirational, but I don't know if it's imminent. Is there any is there any chat amongst coaches, or maybe this is a, probably a better question for for the, for the owners around the league set up for for next season? Is it going to be still three imports, all that sort of stuff? Is that I'm, I'm, I'm too soon with this question? To be honest, it's not something I actually know. Um, you know, like there's I know there's been. There's regular league meetings, kind of owner meetings, and they're, they're continuing to try and drive the the league forward and raise the standards. And, and probably all of these questions are are getting talked about. And there's some... I know right now I've got a few questions. I'll, I'll speak to our ownership and, and Craig as the general manager and, and put forward to some potential league meetings. And again, it's the same. Every team will be the same. As the, do the rules yeah. stay the same do, for our recruitment? Do we... Do we have the under eighteen, under twenty one rule? Do we? Yeah, yeah governments. Who's going is to be there, doing is there any any teams looking to come in? Is it maybe gets to twelve? Like, did you see imports. Um, yeah, I, was I, still, I, I think these there. things come out and they come out quick enough once once they've been discussed and maybe decided. But I suppose for this league's point of view, all the focus will be on uh, the playoffs and play in Coventry yeah. weekend. So, and, and 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 like everyone, I guess we've been lucky to be there even. From the, the national game, um, you, you hear a lot more in these elite leagues. The same these playoff weekends is always buzzing with a bit of rumour. Some of it true. And you um, going down to Coventry? Not decided. Non-committal on that yet. Like a bit tough. 
Yeah, but you know, I think still, there'll still be a lot of good hockey to watch, um, and I think that there's a part of me saying, "Yep, yeah, like oh, I'll probably go and and learn again." You know, even as a coach of a new team here, and, and as for me as a coach, I've always said that every day is a school day. So yeah. if I can go and watch how people work in that environment. I guess the last couple of years I've been there as coaching our team. So if I can use that, I will. But I think. Also, when you spend and players are the same, you know, when you spend so much time on the road and and working on a season, then you've got to give your family that time, um, your, your wife and kids. So, well, if I can work within our family model, then potentially, but I don't know. Okay, well, we're just about to get to the end of this podcast. Thanks everyone for for watching. And before we go, there's a little bit. Of exciting news about the last Saturday, the Saturday game against the uh, Hull just after the game, isn't there? Yeah, I, I think um, by the time this goes out, we'll have announced that we're going to have a skate with the players um, after the game. I think it's just a way to say thank you to the fans, um, young and old, and you know, it's something that we've done here, albeit on the back of success and trophy wins the last few years but you know if you have a if you have a favorite uh, favorite player if you've got a jersey that needs signed if you just want some selfies if you just want to talk um you know the, the, the players really really appreciate the support we've had all year so um they'll be happy to, to be staying on the ice and mingling and, and interacting with and our as, supporters and as you say teams likely to change for next season so it's the last chance to watch your season 23-24 Sharks? Last chance to watch us. Obviously, we, the, the big thing for us is we want to send the boss off with a, with a full house and, and you know, a, a win and, and show him the respect that him and his career deserves. So there's that part as well. Um, as you say, that the, instantly that means that the team's different, even if it's only by one guy next year. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of the it's a fun thing to do. It, it's not the ending of the season that we wanted, but if, this game is still is still fun for everybody, and and you have to remember that. So if we can interact and have some fun with with the public and with our with our fans, and um, you know, they, say they pay their hand earned money. I've you know, no doubt we've spent thousands throughout the year up and down the country, and. Um, they can then get a little just a little bit of thank you back for the players and, and the staff then it's massively important to us as a club that we continue to do that so yeah firstly get down here make sure you see this team off including including Ross the boss and and then yeah if you want to and then you can get on the ice stay around stay get upstairs and uh kind of end the season with a bit of fun any words about Ross <laughs> he's a beauty He's an absolute beauty. Uh, I'm going to tell him this because uh, that's what I tell him every year. He's not a skilled guy, Andy. He's not a skilled guy. <laughs> I keep telling him. No, I mean, there's not a lot of words you can you can add to what's out there. He's he's a tremendous human being, first and foremost. I think that's what people see Ross Murray, the kind of all-action, um, bit of rough and tumble on the ice and the, the king of the north, self-proclaimed <laughs> social media stuff. But for me, first and foremost, an unbelievable human being. He would do anything for anybody, anything for his teammates. Um, you know, I've had him from, I think he was 15, I don't even think he had to be 16 to play at that time, I think he was 15. Um, and we've shared some huge highs. We, even when he went the year to Whitley, you know, it was still, we, we made that, not necessarily to Whitley, but we made the decision together that it was a good thing for him and his family. Um, we stayed in touch through that year, every summer, and and you know, hopefully this doesn't change. But every summer, he would his his, if you want to call it signing chat or discussion, was in my house. It was always in my house. It was never wanting to meet. He came to the house and would set the world to right on everything, not just hockey, and it was something that we both looked forward to and enjoyed. And what a servant, not just to to our club but to the game. He, he gave, the one thing you could say about Ross is he gave everyone he had every night. He was an all-in. There was no halfway with that guy. All-in, he deserves everybody's respect. He deserves all the, the kind of love he's been shown at the moment. Um, and I've always said, as long as I'm here, he'll always remain a part of this club. 
I've never asked you this question before. And do you think if he had stayed with the Sharks that year he went to Whitley Bay, we'd have won the league? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna I know you don't know, I'm but gonna I'm just say no. The but, I'm gonna say no because he's gonna go. Well, it was just me. Um, <laughs> hey, who knows? Who That's why knows? I asked the question. I guess. I guess a player like a player like Ross um, is. You know, I kind of call him a glue guy. Like they're, took, they're, he took they're, away from us and he added to them, didn't they're he? They're so. the they're the glue that hold changing rooms together. Like they're the they're the coaches, kind of lieutenants that you put in there and. Like for, I've always, my philosophy has always been that the, the dress rooms at the, the team's place. I go in and I say my piece, and I come out again. So, you need guys like that in there, and and yeah, maybe we would have, maybe we would have, maybe we would have. Ultimately, for him, he doesn't care because he won another title and he's gave himself that six time, um, and he deserves credit for that. What what he did do, and I will say this, he taught that Whitley team how to win, and that's again no blown smoke t towards him, but. The discussions we had early in that season was that we beat them a couple of times early and they struggled to face us. But his winning mentality, which he got for here, um, he he kind of showed that that Whitley team that it was possible and, and kind of how to do it. So he deserves huge credit for that. He's been a winner all his career. Um, I'm glad to see he got you know, he got that nice goal the other week. That, uh, and then he also got a stick to the face got, as well. Got, then he got some stitches on on Sunday, but, but I, I think that the team, the dressing room, you know, everybody will, will miss miss him in that respect. But I know that you know this club means too much to him for him to be a stranger. So just kind of watch the space. We might he might still well, show up at some point in a different way. I know the kids love him. Everybody um, loves him. He's so, a lovable guy. Yeah, get a lot. I mean, it's it's. I have nothing but love for him. I uh, class him not only as a player coach relationship, but I class him as a you know, as a friend. I've been lucky enough to witness him and Vicky get married and, and Angus being born and being part of that in, in his life. So um I, one, I guess one, enough. One last question on 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 Ross, and it's a cheeky question, I'm no doubt in that. In his last game against Hull, his four hundredth game, what would be better? Him scoring one of his played my goals for the side just inside the blue line and then a big celebration against the Plexi or five minutes for fighting? If he didn't have the stitches, I might have said the, the <laughs> five minutes <laughs> and a nice Ross the Boss celebration after Absolutely. the fight. I think being sensible because of the, the eye, it's going to have to be a goal. Oh, you can, you a can goal. go off with a goal and a celebration. Maybe the game winner. We'll call it, we'll say the game winner. Knowing how he probably get then tossed out the game for an over exuberant celebration. I'm sure he's probably retiring because all the all the base layers just completely is falling about, isn't that? And he, he's not, he's he's too superstitious to change it. Potentially, potentially, but yeah, again, unbelievable human being, unbelievable for this club, deserves everything he gets, and hopefully he goes off with uh, a smile on his face. That's going to be the main thing. Well, I'm sure there'll be some fans at home who will have watched Ross all through his career. They're probably. A good, a good dozen or so that probably saw him in his first game. You don't want to miss his last game. I believe there's only 20 odd tickets left for sale for Saturday, so get yourself down and watch Ross's last game for the Sharks. Before we go, Martin, there's a chance. I don't know if we'll have a podcast next week. We might. Maybe we get Showbiz on and uh, Dave and Phil. We'll see what we can do. Might be you. But just in case there isn't one for next week, a message to the fans for the season. As always, it starts with a massive thank you for your support, your your generosity to to the club, to the players, to the for the money you've spent, for the endless hours you've spent watching the game, travelling to games, commenting online on games, um, you know, just showing us respect, trusting us early in the season. I know it was not easy. Obviously, we're 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 all massively disappointed that we couldn't extend our season for you guys as much as ourselves. But I think we can all be proud. We've shown once again that with the supporters' help that the Sharps family is a, is a unique place. Uh, it's a special place. It's a place that everybody holds dear in their heart. And yes, it might be disappointing. Some might, some people might be upset that the team kind of breaks up a wee bit and the uncertainty of an off-season. But 
it's been an exciting journey. We hope that you continue to stick with us and, and are part of the journey going forward. And uh, let's go out with a, with a bang this weekend and a smile on our faces and celebrate a, our kind of maiden season here together by packing the place out and sending this team off on a high. Martin, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today, but also throughout the season. And thank you and the team for an amazing season. It's been brilliant. It's been the best that I've ever watched here. The hockey's been great. There's been highs, there's been lows. We've beaten the, the best teams. Um, it's just been fabulous. And I know we've still got two games left in this season, but I'm already looking forward to next season and what that will that will bring. I'm just hoping the season tickets come out really soon. I'm, I'm sure we'll be getting announcements on them in the next week or so. Yeah, I'm sure we will. And, you know, thank you to you. Um, this has been... It's been real fun every week, you know. I always enjoy you and I shooting the breeze and for everything you've done and for every you know, every match night volunteer, every volunteer at this club, every supporter of this club, every sponsor of this club, everybody behind the scenes. Um, it's just a massive thank you. We we appreciate you. Maybe sometimes you don't think we do, but we do. And uh, yeah, we look forward to next season as much as anybody else and hopefully they'll yeah, keep stay tuned. There will be some news, some big news. Um both on season tickets and on and events through the summer, and you know we're not going anywhere. As much as there might be a bit of downtime, we're not going anywhere, and look forward to having some fun over the summer as well. Ah, oh, we have to have some fun over the summer. It's too long a, a close season not to have fun. Thank you again, Martin, and thank you everyone for watching. This is Andy Glenn saying cheerio.